Okay, I'm gonna open the door. Go, 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 go. Get back. Go, go, go. Okay, I'm ready? No. Try to move them. First time we're moving them. <laughs> when we have liquids that we need to give the hens, like old soup or old dairy, we give it to them in these empty plastic containers left over from hardware screws. And they love it. Num num. So we've been on the farm for nine months now. We moved into the house last night. So we're in here. And that's been the goal since we got here. But remember, we were confronted with so many unexpected barriers, like the house being filled with black mold, which was thousands of dollars that we had to raise, um, and a lot of work that had to be done to get the house livable again. I had to redo the plumbing from scratch from the very beginning. We had to have like two separate electricians come out. It's been a lot. So nine months now, we're in the house. We have power, we have running water, we have hot water, that's important. We don't have air conditioning yet, but right now the weather is really, really good. Uh, it's perfect in fact, and with you know being able to open and close certain windows and the ceiling fans, we're able to keep the temperature really comfortable. Plus living out in the auto shop, for nine months has really acclimated us to adverse temperatures. Uh, we've gotten more used to putting things on, taking things off, setting up space heaters, putting blankets on. It just seems second nature. We've got 110 souls on this farm that we're responsible for, between the Nuggets and the Laying Hens and Lily the Cat and Corey and I, it's 110. We've got Mar of the Horse, which is 111, although Marv is completely self-sufficient, and I mean entirely self-sufficient. He's got access to fresh running water. He's got a water trough that is refilled from a well via a solar system. It's completely automated. And between all the fruit trees and the grass and stuff, he apparently finds enough to eat. So we're all doing great. Uh, the wedding is in June, and as of July, we will have been here for a year. So I feel like we've done quite a bit in a year. In the more micro sense, I made a chicken feeder last night. This is a plastic party tray from the dollar store and a five gallon bucket. Screwed the party tray to the bottom of the bucket and then cut holes in the bottom of the bucket with a hole saw. So hopefully now I'll be able to pour chicken feed into this and it will fill these little bins every time they empty. When do we get to officially call ourselves farmers? Is it like after your first harvest or after the first meal where everything on the table is something that you've grown? I don't know what the real benchmark is and maybe it's subjective, but let me know what you think. Let me know what you think is the point at which someone can officially call themselves a farmer. At this point, we've remodeled the house that we're living in. We, <laughs> we have a shitload of animals. We got plants in the ground as of yesterday. So I need to know what more, what metrics we need to hit so that we can start calling ourselves. The hens have discovered the young birds. You ladies be nice. These kids look up to you. Moving into the house has been hard on Lily. She spent most of the day under the covers kind of brooding. 
You self-care girl, I support it. Lily, it's lunchtime. Are you gonna stay in bed all day? <laughs> okay. I'm repainting the kitchen with basically a coat of white rust-oleum on everything. White rust-oleum is my favorite kitchen paint. It's a beautiful white, a brilliant white, makes everything feel larger, the cabinets feel brighter. It's also got like a really nice hard enamel finish to it, so it's easy to clean and it takes a beating. It doesn't get dirty very easily. This is not a rust-oleum ad, but it sounds like one. Something else I'd like to point out is that you've no, you'll notice I, I remove cabinet doors. A cabinet is just a shelf with a door. And the only reason to have a door on a shelf is because either you're trying to keep too many things in there or you don't want to see it or you don't want anyone else to see it. So I'm taking a much more conscious approach to my storage in life. I'm doing away with cabinet doors, closet doors when I can. I wanna see what I have. We've moved into the kitchen, officially. There's the liberated Tulsa World newspaper machine that we've made into a prep island with a trash can inside. We've got all our eggs, homegrown staple of our diet. The kitchen is entirely clean and repainted. And tell me this would look any better with cabinet doors, seriously. It looks bigger and brighter. I can't wait to see this filled with food. Got our pantry lockers. Still need to fix that. There's a few things to fix, like the whole dining room. We're getting there, one room at a time. And uh, Corey and I both believe the kitchen is a very important room, probably second only to the bedroom. Check it out, I got a pizza in there. And here is a five gallon bucket version of a waterer. It's a five gallon bucket glued and screwed with rubber gasketed roofing screws to the little drain pot that goes under a uh, pot for a potted plant, a little plastic $4 drain pot. And then I made tiny drill holes around the outside, realized later after trying it that that was too many. So I used epoxy to plug up all but one tiny drill hole right there. Basically, you just fill this thing with water faster than the water drains out the hole. And then you throw your lid on top and that stops the water from being able to drain out over the edge of this thing. I don't know how it works. Hydrodynamics, magic. And there's the waterer in position. Working great. This is by far the way to go. A similar Store-bought chicken waterer costs anywhere between, well, I'm not even gonna guess the figures, but it's much more than this, which was free and like $4. I think Goldie is our most beautiful hen. She's just stunning. She's got a beautiful little beard and those gold and black feathers. And she lays the daintiest, most perfect little egg. She lays a teeny tiny light blue oblong egg. Cause she's a princess. right now. You girls are pretty as well. However, as far as temperament, the Rhode Island Reds are far and away my favorite hens. They are a lot more social 
and talkative and friendly. They're a lot braver. You know, all, all the things you want your hen to be active, really good at eating bugs, consistent at laying eggs. They are that. They're like the perfect hens. Yeah, you girls are my favorite. So I've also decided, even though Cornish Cross are absolutely bred for meat, I am going to keep the smallest of our meat birds and transition her over to the laying flock. Not because I expect her to lay eggs or to live a really long time. I, I know that they don't live as long. But because I want to see how a Cornish cross will age and develop if allowed a more, you know, a healthier, more active, free-ranging lifestyle. If she gets to live like these girls, you know. And the reason I'm choosing the smallest is both because it has the least value as a meat bird, uh, and also I think that it will be less likely to become morbidly obese, which apparently is one of the issues that can happen with, with these uh, Cornish crossbirds when they get older. But I think, you know, if allowed a healthier diet, more natural diet, and a lot of exercise, trying to keep up with these girls, maybe it can uh, grow and have an enjoyable adulthood. We'll see. It's science. I just want to observe, see what happens.